This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at blend modes in Photoshop, Premiere, and Final Cut. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to work with blend modes in Photoshop. Blend modes are not new to Photoshop. They've been there since the very beginning, and here I've created a Photoshop document with a variety of backgrounds and a variety of text colors. For instance, I've got white text, I've got blue text, I've got black text. I'm just going to toggle these different layers on and off to illustrate. I've even got 50% gray text, which you can see if you've got incredibly good eyesight. <laughs> also, I've got some different color backgrounds. I've got a white background, which takes care of the text totally. I've got a black background, a gradient background, color background. So what I want to do is to show how blend modes work against these different combinations. Now, right now, there's no relationship between the background and the foreground. And when you're dealing with all white text or solid backgrounds, blend modes aren't going to help a whole lot. For instance, if I select this white text and apply a screen, notice our groups. There's the screen or lighter value section, the multiply or darker value section, and overlays the midtone section, and way down at the bottom are the color sections. If I apply a screen, absolutely nothing changes because of the foreground and background, all the brightest pixels are in the text. Therefore, the text is superimposed over the background. But if I start to mess with the background, if I start to change this by, for instance, going with, say, 50% gray against a black background, again, the lighter pixels are still in the text. So even with screen mode here, we're not going to see anything change because the lightest pixels are all in the foreground. What we need for blend modes to work is texture, differences in grayscale values in the text or differences in grayscale values in the background. Let me illustrate. Let's go back to normal. We change the blend mode from this pop-up menu here and we select the layer first to get that to apply. So let's turn off the black background and now we've got a gradient background. And I don't have pure white or pure black text. Blend modes work best when your text is some value other than pure white or pure black. So let's select this and let's apply a screen. And now notice that it takes the lighter pixels from the foreground and the background and gives us a different look. If we take a look at multiply. Notice that there's a shading difference here. The top of those letters is lighter than the bottom of those letters. Or we'll take a look at overlay. Again, overlay combines based upon midtones, and the center of this gradient is all midtones. Your text tends to disappear. So let's go back to normal again, and let's change our background one more time. And now we'll have it be a green, and we'll go to screen. Now look what's happened. The grayscale value has now combined with the color value, and instead of being a midtone gray, I've got a lighter shade of green because it's sharing color values and it's sharing grayscale values. Okay, let's take a look at white text against here with a screen setting. Again, the lightest pixels are all in the white text. Blend modes never work best with pure white or pure black text. It's too extreme a range. You want to work with midtones. So let's go back to gray. Now there's a screen again screen and here's an overlay again very hard to see but we can start to play with some of the other options and the three in this category that I like the best are overlay soft light and hard light now this does not make the text stand out but it does make the text look much more organically connected with the background if I want to have text stand out, I'm going to add a drop shadow and make sure that there's high contrast, pure white or pure black. But many times you want to have the text look like it's been, say, spray painted on a background. Blend modes will help that to happen. Let's go back to normal and let's turn on something even more interesting. Now we're starting to see where blend modes can become effective. I've got a textured background. That which gives this background its texture is not the color. It's a difference in grayscale. This dark line right here indicating the edge of the concrete and this lighter shading here. I want to pick up that texture in the blend mode. And again, the best place to start when you're working with mid-tone grays is to start with an overlay. 
totally makes that disappear. Well, that's certainly no good. Let's take a look at multiply. Notice how now we're seeing the texture in the back be reflected in the, the text in the front. If we go with screen, again, it looks like I can, I can the difference here, look at the difference between, say, doing a screen, let's go back to normal, and just changing the opacity. Notice how as I change the opacity, the actual letters, especially color value, gets harder to see. Let me illustrate here with color. If I gradually fade this blue text, notice that I'm losing the color value. Yes, this looks more translucent, but I'm losing too much of the value of the text. If I set this to overlay, on the other hand, notice how I'm retaining more of the color information. Soft light, hard light. I've retained with hard light. Look at how much color I've kept. And yet this absolutely looks like it's been spray painted on the concrete. Hard light makes these organically mesh in a way that simple dissolves or changing the opacity don't. That's what I like about blend modes, is it gives me the ability to share the texture from underneath and apply it to the text above. This is what it looks like before. And look at how much more interesting it is setting it to hard light. It combines values based upon mid-tone grays. Now let's go one more step here. Let's turn off color and go here. I have color in the background as well as texture. Now clearly hard light makes it look like this, this text has been totally spray painted on. But let's do something even more. Let's change this. Let's first look at multiply. Okay, stronger. We still pick up the texture. We look at overlay. Kind of thin, but hard light really brings it back again. And we look at screen, which takes lighter values. Okay. Now let's look at the fourth category, which is difference. Difference looks at the difference in color values between the foreground and the background. Whoa, look at that. Clear texture showing through. And if we were, as we will a little bit later in this webinar, start to work with fonts like Chalk Duster or Brush Script or something which looks like it's been sprayed on, the blend mode will absolutely make it look like you've painted it directly on this rock, even when you haven't. The categories of blend modes are screen, these, these five right here, which combine based upon lighter values, and multiply in these five values, which combine based upon darker values, and overlay in these seven values, which combine based upon mid-tone gray values. Overlay tends to be my favorite section for sharing texture and difference in these four here, which combine based upon different color values. Of those two, I use difference the most and subtract second to difference. Blend modes combine images based upon grayscale values or color values that allow us to share texture between images. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at blend modes in Photoshop and Premiere and Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 194. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours, all in depth and all up to date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers a variety of software and technologies. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. Thanks.